artist. Still not where I want to release the boys. I look back and see the first time I met Muddy Walls, the first time I met BB, the first time I met the Stones, and so I just a thousand. Being a blues player, that's the way my life is. of the blues, which for me is, is a never-ending source of inspiration. Gentlemen, welcome to Club El Mundo Elegante. It gives me great personal pride and pleasure in presenting to you the, um, the Mulabanda Rhythm Aces. Blues is one of our, our, our only original creations in this country, you see. But on the other hand, American music is, is a hybrid and evolving thing. There's no tradition, really. You, know, you don't have hundreds of years of fiddle playing one way or hundreds of years of singing one way. You have just these, all these people thrown in for about a 200-year period, and everything gets mixed up. And the blues seems to be 
Uh, there's a lot of theories about what it is. Well, where is it anyway? You know, it's in Mississippi mostly. There, it's in Texas too. There's, a, it's you, you have blues suddenly became a popular thing, and everybody was told, you know, if you got any people in this little town that can sing the blues, and somebody says, I do. Well, do that. And so I also do circus music. I also do pop music. Well, we don't want that. Boy, you sing blues for us. We'll give you fifty dollars. Well, okay, here I go. You know. So it's like everybody's singing blues. You got Ma Rainey on the Tin Pan Alley side, or Bessie Smith on the organized side, out of New York. And then you've got it down to some crazy rural character like Henry Thomas from Texas, who's just so out there. They were given the task. I mean, they were told, you, blues is what we want. The white guys come down with the recording apparatus and say, no, no, don't do that other stuff. Do blues. God knows what was lost. During the Depression, this, this, uh, this tendency to sing about life and make up songs about life flowered alongside the growth of the record industry. It wouldn't have happened had it not been for the record industry in this country. So technology always plays a part. The record business had grown up from the 20s, let's say, to the 30s. You had better quality records, more record players in people's homes. I'm talking about country people. The city people didn't listen to records. They didn't know it existed. But um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a story of American life. Before the big explosion of consumer consumerism that we're now swallowed up in, which came after World War II. See. So this was your last look and the first look, really, at uh, real life. Black people came to the cities, and they had a tough time in cities, and then they got things got better, and now you've got, you know, shooting and gangs in South Central L.A., and what are you going to do about that? But it's not about the blues anymore. It's not about that country thing. So, but on the other hand, the funny thing I see is a lot of black people at blue shows. You didn't used to see any. God, no. They go anywhere to get away from it, you know. Rather go see Motown shows or respectable, well-dressed, you know, of course. Uh, but now, this this idea of everybody has roots become rather popular. And maybe because you get a certain distance away from it, you know, generations, I think it's time, really, you know. And you can look back and say, well, that was my grandfather's time, and they suffered. But I'm out of that now, so I can dig this music. There's something for me in this music. I might even find a sense of pride or pleasure in it. My baby done left me times five billion. No longer is this saying too much about. It becomes a ritual music almost. It, it, it loses that sense of the very thing is now. You know, I just got away, or I just got shot at, or I just had my girlfriend over. I just got drunk. In fact, I am drunk. Blues records are drunk. When they're drunk, these blues singers were incredible. In the middle of being drunk, they're making this insane record. So you always will hear this sense of the very hot, you know, almost overheated present in the music. Then that begins to go away because people are repeating something they no longer live through. The weird sound of a voice out in the ether somewhere. That to me is blues, like the root note of the universe. You know, what is it? The Buddhists say it's suffering. You know, other people say it's just this thing you can't describe. 
then you begin to complicate it and you, you make up funny verses and you add horns and drums and bass and pretty soon all you have is my baby got left. You don't have anything left of that crazy, weird, you know, strange, amorphic thing that nobody can identify. And then uh, it turns into a way of selling Levi's and jeans and the rock and roll is dead. So people want to have fun. So they listen to blues and they go get the beer and they go get the jeans and they go get the cigarette. And then it becomes a huge industry. And then we're sitting here talking for TV long after this music is like, well, where is that? Where can you find it? Then Benders came along with his movies, Paris, Texas movie, and he said, well, please, he goes, please uh, don't uh, play, play good music, man. The blues, simple, blind really, I don't know. And it was in his usual way, you know, like telling you nothing. But one element, one thing, I said, oh, I know what you mean, just this little kind of tone, just a little questioning tone, you know, like what's in the head? This guy speaks no words in the first half of the but he's got some, let's imagine his insides are in a tonal setting. You know, he's got some emotional aura, and the sound around him sounds like this. Out there in the desert, they had done a lot of their uh, ambient recording out there, and it's all got this kind of wind sound and air sound. It's about around E flat. And I've been out there a lot. I know what that goes like. It goes, you know, just twirl the hose. Simple stuff. But it's, it's very minimal. It's very harmonic, and then the, the quieter you get, and the less you do, the more this mystery can come through. Let me think back. When I was about four, I had a, an accident with the sock, and it was awful. You know, a little kid, and what is a little kid going to do? You know, terrible laid up and hurt and and I was uh, I think despondent and spooked you know so m my folks had a friend they were into music and not in the business but interested in classical music still are and this man was a, uh, a classical viola player blacklisted because of the witch hunt and the, you know communist problems and all those uh, house of American activities this man fabulous player but he couldn't get work but was any of these to hang out a lot, and uh, I think what he he seemed to sense that I needed something to do, so he brought me a guitar. I mean, I was four, you know, and he brought me a little tenor guitar, but yay big. And uh, I remember lying in bed. It was at night, and he was in the house, and I heard him talking in there. And he brought this thing in, and it was dark, you know, in the room, and I'm lying in bed, and he set this thing down on my chest. You see, backside down. Well, what's that? I go. Oh, it's a guitar, and he goes strum, and then this, of course, the vibration from the thing. It's one of the reasons it makes it an interesting instrument, you know. Kind of goes down into the body, and it's like, oh. So that was my thing, <laughs> you know. He'd given me this, this thing to do. I can only look back and think, you know. I was given a kind of a, of a uh, magic carpet. You know? Records are great, but they're very limited storage capability on a record. As much as they bring, especially 78s, give you a lot because they go around so fast, you know. There's a lot more stuff in those grooves than on a 33. But they don't tell you a lot about the essence of the harmonic space around these people. 
That's the trick. That's the key to it. It's very hard to know in a big city. It's so loud, so much noise, so much motion. How are you going to pick any harmonic essence out of anything right now? You're just hiding all the time. Me, I feel like I'm getting out of the way of 10 million people. I want to run and hide. But you go down to some little country town, you can open up. You know? Not everybody can do that, and it's harder now than it used to be. It's just all turning into a theme park. That's what blues is to me now. It's kind of, I hate to say this, theme park. Louisiana is uh, a lot of little pockets of different styles of music. Uh, down in New Orleans, I mean, uh, it's known pretty much for, for the New Orleans jazz scene, but there are some blues players in New Orleans. Uh, Baton Rouge is basically uh, uh, known as a blues town, although, although there are some Zydeco and some rock players and country players around in, in the Baton Rouge area. Zydeco is nothing but the blues with the... Uh, now, I know that with a square, yeah, and oh, exactly. yeah, I know, I know. And that's because of the cultural aspect, right. where the people live and how they do things. And in Lafayette, well, it's basically a, a Zydeco Cajun uh, area that way. But uh, people like Rudy Richard, who came to Baton Rouge from Opelousas, and uh, decided, well, I play great guitar. I'm going to learn how to play the accordion. First of all, I made a guitar. And uh, put some strings on piece of wood and start plucking, plucking around. And it started sounding pretty good. And I said, well, this is not going to make it. So I had a good friend of mine. <coughs> uh, he told me, he says, man, we need to, after I met him, he said, man, we need to try to get you a guitar set. So we did. I, I'll tell you what I done. I went and picked a little cotton. It's uh, not really, not really a romantic blues, in my opinion. Uh, it's got some humor, where Delta blues, what they call it. You got a lot of slide guitar work and, and, and stuff like that. In Texas, you got more of a rocking, uh, uh, upbeat thing happening. Hard uh, in Chicago, it's kind of a mixture of all that, since it's the big blues melting pot. And I got this guitar and brought it home. The first thing my mother said, you think you're going to be able to do anything with this little guitar? I said, Mama, you just wait and see. Uh, how, how hard is the competition, you know, with competing with, like, the blockbusters, the CD stores, and, and all the bigger bigger stores? Well, it's, it's absolutely, it's, it's difficult, really, to, to compete with them. The reason I'm, uh, I guess, I, I, I'm dedicated to staying is because I was around when all of this stuff was, uh, was being played on the bandstand, most of it, all, especially the old stuff. I was in the band business myself for, for like, like 40 years. I had a band, my, my own band, for like more than 25 years. So we talked with Chuck Mitchell last night, and he said that uh, that y'all had like like a, something going on a while back. And I was under contract there with uh, Buddy Stewart for a couple of years, you know, maybe five or six years. And uh, we did a lot of traveling right around the 50-mile area. Well, yeah, well, I, I, I'm, I have produced... Chuck Mitchell. I'm, 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 I wrote his first song on you know, both sides of the record, and I produced it. Like I, uh, that's around back in 1965, but then I was, I actually started in the business in 7, 1945. Uh, you and Tabby must have hung out of that. Huh? You and Tabby must have hung out of that. I must tell you, what people say, well, I'm before Tabby's time. Yeah, it was before 45. He well, said he'd been 50.
months of sea. And all oh, every stick of furniture in your house they see. Now you got that gorgeous TV set. And that level net. But it ain't sitting in the cabinet. It's sitting in the tree. <laughs> Somebody yell, Timbo! And the tree keep tumbling down. Cause there is the door or a chair or the floor. The roots so still in the ground. Everything that's made of wood was once a tree. Don't you get the wrong idea? Ain't nothing free. You got collectors by the school. They keep a knocking on your door. But they really not knocking on your door. They're knocking on the tree. Somebody a timber. <laughs> and a cheeky tone. Down. Whether it's a door or the sort of flow, the roots so are still in the ground. Anything that's made of wood free, and it was made to be understood by the light. Now, when you dead, they weep, and when you buried six feet deep. You're really not buried in the coffin, you're buried in the tree. <laughs> Somebody else, Timber, head in the tree, can't turn it down. Well, it was the door for the chair or the floor, the red sauce still in the ground. And don't start bringing me down, cause everything that's me. Was once a tree. Yeah.